talked about this guy a while ago. He reacted to the casting of Shutigatwa as the Doctor. This is history debunked. Like I said, we talked about him before, and his very strange response was, oh, I'm going to watch all of the adverts from Channel 4 or ITV and make a note of whenever a non-white person turns up. Or, here's an advert for the National Heritage and National Trust, and there's black people exploring Stonehenge. And we all know black people don't care about history. This is, we're losing our culture, etc. A lot of people have sent me this video. Doctor Who features a same sex interracial kiss how cool is that from history debunked i'm glad he's on board i'm, I'm glad that he likes the idea of a, a same sex interracial kiss let's see what a history debunked has to say hello again there was a time when doctor who was no more than an entertaining children's program to watch at saturday tea time when it was first being devised the original idea was that it would be educational and that the TARDIS would visit various historical periods and children would learn about these eras while being entertained. It was to be a visual version of the BBC schools programmes, one of which, by the way, on wireless in the early 60s was called In the Beginning, and that actually featured a time traveller going back to the time of the dinosaurs and observing their habits. It was in the end decided, though, to make it a purely entertaining fantasy, although some of the first episodes were set during the Stone Age, and that was a, a trial run of um, trying to show children something about real history. So th this is like partially true, but it is a simplification like, that he's clearly going to try and like use that simplification to his advantage later. So when Doctor Who was devised, yes, it was an educational show and it did kind of like stick to that for the, at least the first like 10 to 15 years of its run. Like when it comes to like there was the cavemen story, of course, with the first one. But for the first season, you know, for the first few seasons, they went to the Crusades. They went to the French Revolution. They also outside of history, they also did many other things like they learned about pesticides uh, and like environmental issues in the planet of giants uh, in the sensorites that was a that was a story an anti-war story inspired by japanese holdout soldiers after the second world war so it wasn't just oh here's the history stuff and then the rest of the stuff the spacefaring stuff is just entertainment no even the spacefaring stuff like planet of giants like the sensorites like other stories of that ilk they were also trying to push a quote-unquote message they also had things on their minds outside of spacefaring stuff for crying out loud the daleks were a nazi parallel and that's a spacefaring story that's not strictly speaking educational but it just shows that this simplified idea of doctor who just being an entertaining show it is a fiction basically it's a it's a simplistic narrative that you kind of open something with but when you actually dive deeper into doctor who as a show it kind of falls apart it's actually something that it's it's not just history educational sci-fi spacefaring nothing on its mind i actually think that that thought process does a lot of disservice to the you know great creatives like peter newman like terry nation etc who worked on the show in the 60s who did have something to say about it you know who were trying to communicate something for crying out loud the show's original script editor was david whittaker a card-carrying socialist it was in the end going to be purely entertaining though the first episode was broadcast out but like his like it gets it's, it's a flimsy retelling it's a flimsy reasoning like it's just simply entertainment like I, I mean in the like most simplistic terms kind of but like people like creatives make work they make art they make media because they have something to say like they're, they're trying to extol something especially in like written scripted formats and such like they're, they're writing something because they have something to say and even if they are trying to be apolitical because we live in a society and all media is political even if they don't mean to they will still say something political or like something that follows their own worldview even if they don't intend it to can you put them at two times speed no no we're gonna listen to this guy how he wants to be listened to president kennedy was assassinated Although there were those who thought that it should have been cancelled out of respect. There was in those days no ulterior motive concealed behind either the plots or the casting. It was simply meant to amuse and sometimes scare the children watching it. Remember, the first script editor of Doctor Who was a card-carrying socialist. The last script editor of classic Doctor Who was Andrew Cartmel, who said, 
that he wanted his run of Doctor Who to, quote, bring down the government. Like, like I said, this is just not true. No ulterior motive behind the plots and casting, la la la. I know, no. So, so who's going to tell him? Who's going to tell him? This was pretty much the same throughout the 60s and 70s until in the 1980s, the series more or less fizzled out before being revived for the new millennium, uh, 2005. Somewhere down the line, it was decided that instead of being just entertainment, Doctor Who should also be used to educate children and young people, just as had been planned back in 1963. They were not to be educated about anything useful, though, like the Wars of the Roses or the Stone Age, but rather about what attitudes and opinions are desirable in the 21st century. I mean, Doctor Who was doing this in the 20th century. <laughs> well, of course, this guy won't name any of those examples. There was no secret about this. The idea was that when the past was visited, black people and Indians would be cast in roles that they would not have occupied at that time, so that children and young people would learn how it could have been in Britain and be shown what Russell T. Davies thought was a better version of the past, one which was, if you like, more up-to-date. <sighs> I mean, we've gone over this before. I know that Stephen Moffat has got that quote where he says we have to tell a lie, but that's a stupid quote because the episode he's referring to is Thin Ice and Empress of Mars, and those like non-white people in those stories are still historically accurate. There have been black people in the United Kingdom since like the first century when you had like the Roman legions coming in and they had black soldiers. So like, you know, the idea of them like just dropping black people into history and it's inaccurate. It's just it's it's stupid. It's a historical it's a fact it's a british history ironically he wants to talk about you know doctor who used to educate children but here he, he's just being anti-education he's just being like anti-empiricism that's why an indian guy was cast as isaac newton a little while ago honestly that kind of is the only example in doctor who's recent history with the exception of rogue which is trying to be like a bridgerton homage as well where the like the colorblind casting is like is actually kind of like prominent. It's only kind of those two examples really in recent years. So this guy's just getting upset at non-white people playing background actors in a Bridgerton homage, which you you know it's Bridgerton, like so that makes sense for like the context of what it's trying to achieve, and also for Isaac Newton, which is a throwaway pre-credit sequence where Nathaniel Curtis as Isaac Newton discovers the theory of mavity. The fact that he's complaining about the, like, the, the race change of Isaac Newton in that story and is not mad at, or oh, kids will think mavity is a thing, is very telling. Then, too, we have to be talked about the correct use of pronouns and not just accept that we have to call boys he and girls she. One recent episode made a point of reminding viewers about this. Uh, yeah, and that episode was called The Curse of Peladon from the 1970s. That story was also called The Censorites from 1964. Like, like this stuff, like, you know, the pronoun usage in Doctor Who is maybe a bit more prominent now than it was before, but to act like it's just a brand new thing that is now just happening in this current run of Doctor Who is absolutely farcical. Homosexuality is another thing which is, it must be emphasised, perfectly normal. Even if 98% of the population does not engage in same sex activity. There was a time. Isn't it actually like more? It's not 98%, isn't it like 80%? In 2002, 93.4% of UK household population age 16 have identified as either heterosexual or straight, down from 95% in 2000. So we're actually more like looking at 7% ish, but still. When a kiss between two men or two women would have made newspaper headlines especially if it occurred during a children's television programme, but no more. These days, it is practically de rigueur. The problem is, though, that when the uh, that's the case, how can you make a same-sex kiss a little more outrageous so that it's not simply taken for granted and that it will actually make the young people watching the programme stop and think? The answer is, of course, to make it an interracial same-sex kiss. You see, interracial kisses were once very daring. In 1968, Star Trek made history when Captain Kirk and Uhuru kissed. 
Obviously, if Doctor Who was to retain the power to make people's eyebrows go up, then something more than just an interracial kiss would be needed. And so the scriptwriters came up with an interracial same-sex kiss. Now, this is how I know that this guy is actually, deep down in his heart of hearts, is a massive cook. Because the episode itself does not emphasize the racial aspect of the dynamic. It's all about the gender. Because Rogue, the episode that this same-sex kiss happens in, is a Bridgerton homage, so there's a lot of colorblind casting. You can see in the extras in the background that there's a lot of, like, non-white people who are dancing in Regency-era England. And while there were non-white people in Regency-era England, of course, they weren't really invited to those sorts of parties unless they were, quote, the help. When it comes to this, though, it's not the fact that it's an interracial kiss on the Bridgerton dance floor. It's the fact that it's a same-sex kiss on the Bridgerton dance floor. Having watched a season and a half of Bridgerton, the idea of it being an interracial relationship is like... like I, I, like, I, I'm not a Bridgerton completionist, but the main romance in series one of Bridgerton is an interracial romance. The main romance in season two of Bridgerton is another interracial romance. The, the racial aspect does not play a role here. Like, in the text at all. It's about homosexuality. In Bridgerton, the same-sex relationships are still frowned upon, even in this fairy tale, a historical retelling of Regency romance. So, when we get to Doctor Who depicting that, the fact that it's an interracial kiss doesn't even play a factor. It's, it's, it's the fact that it's a same-sex kiss. And the kiss between Jonathan Groff and Shuti Gatwa is not even the first interracial kiss that Doctor Who has done. I mean, we had uh, Heather and Bill in series 10 back in 2017. Like, that's an interracial kiss. History debunked because he's a massive cook and he thinks of nothing more than interracial romances. And I can guarantee you that this guy's browser history is like wall-to-wall -wall interracial porn. Like, I, I can guarantee you, I would bet my life on it. The fact that that's his takeaway from the scene in Rogue, even though that doesn't play a factor at all. M Mickey and Rose, what, the, what on earth am I on about? Mickey and Rose in 2005. I just had massive Mickey erasure in my mind because of Noel Clark. Yeah, one second, two seconds. Let's have a look at this scandalous thing. Doc, I think it's more neurotic brain. They see race and everything. Yeah, because they because they don't view people like history debunked and neurotic and other reactionaries like them don't view non-white people as human. So they see an interracial kiss or an interracial romance as like something way more scandalous and way more obscene than it actually is. Because like I said, they don't view non-white people as human. So that's why they view it through the lens that they do. It's actually kind of a simple thing to, you know, once you actually clock it. Donna with her husband, her multiple husbands, Toshiko and Adam in Torchwood as well, the 10th Doctor and Martha, even though it wasn't so much a romantic kiss, Martha gets engaged to uh, Tom Ellis, uh, who's a white actor, you know, so interracial romances in Doctor Who have kind of been bog standard for the past 20 years, and Doctor Who has been talking about, like, racial uh, dynamics Obviously, with the Daleks and the Nazis since the 1960s, you know, a dislike for the unlike. But even, like, textually, isn't it like the subtext in the late 1980s was that Ace, like, had a, like, romance with a non-white person? Or at least was, like, a big, like, racial, like, e racial equality advocate and stuff? So this has kind of been on the forefront of Doctor Who's mind since the late 1980s. So once again, the fact that this guy saw that kiss and took away from the episode that... The fact that it was interracial was the big, scandalous, headline-grabbing thing that the show was trying to do. Even though they've done interracial kisses and interracial romances for decades at this point, the fact that he took that away, as opposed to it being a same-sex, like, Bridgerton Regency-era kiss, says way more about how he views media and how he views race than it does about the supposed nefarious intent of Doctor Who and its creatives. That's breaking too old to tackle this at once. That would teach children something a lot more valuable than some stuffy old history. There is a slight difficulty, of course, with a scene such as that in Doctor Who, which shows... Also, the fact that he seems to think the writers were plotting evilly to make it interracial and gay. I mean, they were plotting, but not evilly. It's just called writing a script. Doctor kissing a white guy. 
And that is, uh, if homosexual relationships are rare, which they are, then interracial homosexual relationships are as rare as hen's teeth. The scene consequently looks rather forced, especially as in a final twist, this kiss takes place in Regency England at a time when homosexual sex between men carried the death penalty. It's almost as if that that was the scandalous bit in the episode. He, he thinks he's got a gotcha, like, oh, this is the actual historical accuracy of the setting, when it's the text of the episode. Like, yeah, that's why it's scandalous in the episode. Like, come on, it, it's just the text. However, as Russell T. Davis, the creator... Oh my god, he smiled when he said death penalty. Yeah, because he doesn't think that black people are human. He doesn't... He, <laughs> obviously, so he, of course he'd be smiling at that. It was the latest incarnation of Doctor Who has said before. His aim is not to show the past as it was. Oh, someone in the chat is right. The first Doctor Who romance with, was with an older Aztec woman. Yes, the Doctor had, like, got engaged to an Aztec woman got engaged they drank cocoa and everything that's like the first doctor romance but as it should have been in other words in actual 1830 in england there would not have been black men present at a grand ball and two men would certainly not have been kissing in public but this is england as russell t davis thinks that it should have been so once again this is just the text of the episode the two men kissing in the episode one of them is a millennia old time lord from gallifrey in the constellation of casterbrus the other is rogue a bounty hunter from the far future we don't really know where he's from but he's not from regency era england it's the doctor and rogue these outsiders of regency era england kissing each other to make a scandal that's that's the text of the episode that, that's just that's just what happens in the episode. So he's remodelling the past. I've been a great fan of Doctor Who over the last 60 years or so. And, and yet, all of this other stuff that you fail to mention, just so conveniently, just goes out of the arguments, just goes out of the context, culturally and historically for Doctor Who, when you see an interracial kiss on screen. Hmm. I thought it might be interesting to see how it was originally considered as a programme to educate children about the past and has now somehow mutated into a way of teaching us not about the past but rather about an alternative universe where Britain was very different both ethnically and in the mores relating to sexuality. I, I, chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Regency era, like characters like i'm not talking about the children the shape-shifting bird people like they, they they stop and stare they don't like they don't cheer there is no like the the dudes on the dance floor kiss and then everyone on the bus claps there's no moment like that this is just like a complete like misinterpretation of the episode like the the fact that it is scandalous and it stops everybody and it draws attention to them because it's not Regency era appropriate. Like that's 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 just the episode. Come on. I find this quite. It seems like every one of these reactionaries is simultaneously the number one biggest Doctor Who fan ever and couldn't possibly be bothered to watch the show and get the details right. Yeah, it's kind of strange how these people who supposedly love Doctor Who don't know anything about it. Because, because unironically, it is virtue signalling. They are virtue signalling, saying, "Oh, Doctor Who was once this great thing." I can't name a single specific, but it was once this bastion of so and so, because I say so. And then now it's 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 degenerated. It's now mutated into the oh, <laughs> my dude. It always has been like that to varying degrees, but it has always been like that to an extent. There was even like some talk at the um when the production of that uh, David Whittaker uh, biography by Simon Gere was being written, the idea that some paperwork was found that maybe supported Sidney Newman, the original grandfather of Doctor Who, as also being a socialist, even though he wasn't, like, maybe out and out about it, but still. But rather about an alternative universe where Britain was very different, both ethnically and in the mores, relating to sexuality. I find this quite an intriguing concept. He finds it quite an intriguing concept, but inside he is, like, dying inside. <laughs> anyway, I was told the comments would be quite interesting, but yeah. The slow destruction of our art, statues, culture, traditions. When you have nothing left to stand for, you stand for nothing. Sick is now the norm. 
Homosexuality is perfectly normal. So I've been drinking, drug abuse, shoplifting and all sorts of things. The UK is currently running at over 100,000 sex child abuse cases per year. All perfectly normal. Normal, good and safe for children are three different things. Firstly, you have to kind of blame the conservatives and the reactionaries for that. Like, they're the ones who have, like, created the material conditions to allow that to happen mainly because they kind of want to. There are way more like conservative MPs who have been accused of and found guilty of like child sexual abuse than there have trans people in the UK. If we're going to be protecting the world from degeneracy and stuff, we have to be talking about Tory MPs. We shouldn't be talking about homosexuals or other queer people. I don't particularly appreciate the public demonstration of snogging between heterosexuals, but between the same sex as I find sickening. <laughs> oh, that's funny. John Pertwee would be st spinning in his grave. My dude, John Pertwee would be snogging Roger Delgado at the first opportunity. If Germany loses this war, the white man will kiss the black man for the entertainment of the masses. The Austrian painter in 1943. We should have listened. This is Nazi shit, by the way. The Austrian painter, this is Hitler. This, this is Nazi shit. This guy, history debunked, has cultivated a Nazi audience. I, I want you folks to know that. This isn't, oh, we disagree on something, so I'm going to call him a Nazi. No, I, I don't and I've never taken that approach. This is actual literal Nazi shit. Somebody at the BBC should be locked up for this. Simply disgusting. I haven't watched the television or read mainstream media for nine years. Now absolutely liberating. I told you this started around Gamergate time. This guy got on the Gamergate bandwagon in 2014, 2015, and now he's just been in the reactionary rabbit hole ever since. The doctor was completely asexual. That was the only premise on which he could take people, pretty young girls in particular, including one young enough to be his granddaughter, on a journey through time and space without it being considered a sexual predator or a pervert. This is intensely telling for Paul's state of mind. The idea that you can only hang around with young people if you are asexual. Because if you hang around with young people otherwise, you'd be considered a sexual predator. Or a I think the FBI should raid this guy's house, and I'm not even fucking kidding. If he was still alive and had not been found out, the BBC would still probably have Jimmy Savile as a program consultant. The idea that an interracial same-sex kiss is on the same category as, like, paedophilia for this guy is just, yeah, th this is just the, your average conservative now in the UK. Like, un unironically, unambiguously, every record has been destroyed or falsified, every book rewritten, every picture has been repainted, etc. Uh, George Orwell 1984 quote from someone who I can guarantee you has not watched or read any adaptation or uh, the original version of 1984. Sick. This is a kid's program too. My dude. The first doctor fell in love with an Aztec woman in 1964. The motivation is clear. Those who control the present control the past, and those who control the past control the future. George Orwell, 19... Once again, this guy has not fucking read 1984. The ghoulish spirit of Jimmy Savile lives through these employees, you know, because black people being on screen is the same as paedophilia. My young son was watching Paw Patrol, a series aimed at very young children. It features two towns, both of which have female mayors. Mayor Goodway, Hispanic or Asian, and Mayor Greatway, black. Almost all the white characters are selfish, criminal, incompetent, or effeminate. The message is subtle, but it's always there. Bloody Rob here, watching Paw Patrol with his notepad in hand. Like, Mayor Goodway, in brackets, Hispanic or Asian. And <laughs> Mayor Greatway, parentheses, black. God, these, this is all of their lives. Like, this is honestly, we've talked about this before, it's almost like a degenerative mental condition where, like, they can't even watch fucking Paw Patrol with their son without, like, spotting who's the non-white characters. Are the, men are the men portrayed, like, as completely virtuous and uncompromisingly heroic with no downs? Like, this is just their life. This is just how they watch media. It must have happened, but I don't recall Doctor Who ever really showing anything like that between straight people, because it's a children's show. My dude, the Doctor's been kissing companions for years and kissing people for years. The, the, the fact that this guy doesn't even think that opposite sex like kisses can happen on a children's show or a family show like Doctor Who is astounding. Kissing is degenerate confirmed. Yeah, true. Damn. 
Dudes, is it is it degenerate to get married? <laughs> Just can't imagine William Hartnell performing a scene like that. No, but he did get engaged to an Aztec woman. Also, isn't there like the, obviously not confirmed, the theory that like William Hartnell was a closeted gay and that like his wife Heather was like caught like shouting to his queer neighbor, like saying, you stole my husband, you stole my husband. Obviously it's gossip, not confirmed. I'm not going to ascribe that as like a surety to William Hartnell or whatever, but like that's like, that's like the theory. That's the, the gossip theory. If I see two men holding hands or kissing, I feel physically sick and my skin crawls, literally revolted and disgusted. Damn, has this guy ever watched classic Doctor Who? revolted and disgusted <laughs> my son decided on his own he doesn't want to watch it anymore he finds it boring the turning point was some lesbian kiss episode dad i get it happens but why do i need to see it watching this he was 10 at the time i'm gonna file this under shit that never fucking happened <laughs> sickening degeneracy in a children's program once again nazi shit very bbc patrick troughton would never have snogged jamie ah dear like genuinely as well take a shot whenever the comment section bring up jimmy savile as well the idea of like same sex like or like interracial partnerships in media is the same as like child predation is just like it's just f f in the mind of your average conservative these are just fucking one and the same like genuinely like god it's it's so sad it's so sad that like something like a gay kiss 20 years ago is just like yeah you get your your daily mail comments and stuff like that complaining about it obviously but the fact that like genuinely over the past 20 years the the uk conservatives have just completely like devolved to this point where 20 years on from that like ordinary depiction on tv and now it's just like indoctrination this is jimmy savile levels of predation this is like so degenerate this is like quoting adolf hitler when like trying to talk about how doctor who is bad kind of just shows the brain rot at play here it's so it's so kind of disheartening to see just the state of this country's discourse over the past 20 years and just how much like homophobia is just like uh, has, has just sort of stuck around and, uh, and and like racism as well for the past like 20 years it's it's, it's depressing to see I forgot that the doctor kissed Astrid yeah on Christmas day to what 13 million people 12 million people Apparently that's degeneracy now. There's nothing more degenerate than kissing a woman, lads. I'm sorry. Sorry to break it to you. I've just seen the um, the video description as well. The BBC science fiction series Doctor Who continues to press boundaries and transgress against convention. Fucking transgress. Look at this fucking wording. <laughs> Putting the trans in transgress. Do it. Happy Pride Month, everybody. <laughs>